Hey there, Minecrafters. Today we're going to talk about a project that I did in my friend's uh, survival multiplayer world. Uh, it's just, it's a small private server. It's not like a public thing. We're not advertising it. Just talking about a project that I did in there. It's called the Iron Sphinx. Uh, the Iron Sphinx was a, um, well, it is a iron golem processing plant. I, I started doing this over here. I'm in a creative book here. And uh, I've built a 16 by 16 platform. That is the dimensions of this floor. So this is 16 blocks long, and then there's a wall. So that the box here, this is 18 blocks by 18 blocks. And this is 16 by 16. And then in the center there's a 4 by 4 hole. Okay? You need to build two of these. Now, the mechanism for this is basically, uh, it's, like I said, 18 by 18. The walls are three blocks high. The floor is 16 by 16 with a 2 by 2 hole in it. Uh, the walls are lined with 64 doors. That's, again, 16 doors, 16 doors, 16 doors, 16 doors. And then we put another layer on. Ugh, why is down and shift the same? Okay, so you build another layer like this. This is another floor. And then you go up here on top build your walls like that. Exactly the same as the previous one. You don't put another layer of doors on top, though. Okay, But the floor and the walls are the same. On the outside of this box, you put little pockets where you store some villagers. You can use like um, a water elevator where it's like a block of water and then a sign and then a block of water and a sign and a block of water and a sign. You just do that all the way up to the sky because you're going to build this thing at the top of the world. Now, it's also important you want to build this inside your spawn chunks, and uh, there are a lot of really good videos explaining how to find your spawn chunks. Spawn chunks are always running, and one of the few things you can do in the spawn chunks that can take advantage of that is building an iron golem farm. Another thing you can do is a chicken farm. Uh, I'll talk about the chicken farm in a second. But basically, you want your villagers, you want your 64 doors, uh, you need at least two villagers up there to start with, when they see those 64 doors, they're going to breed up until there's 20, 24, 26 villagers. Once you've got 26 villagers and more than uh, 64 doors, 26 villagers, or however many you're going to end up with at that point, you're going to end up spawning about two iron golems every six minutes. So every six minutes you're going to get two iron golems. When you kill an iron golem, he drops between, I think it's what, three and seven, something like that, iron blocks. It's, but usually it's about four iron iron bars. Um, ingots, iron ingots. Uh, so that's four iron ingots per golem every six minutes. So you get two every six minutes, that's 20 of them an hour, times four, that's 80 iron ingots an hour while you're playing Minecraft somewhere else. That's a pretty good reason to build this thing. And if you build two of these things, you can double that yield. So you can end up with 160 bars of iron per hour. That's crazy. You'll never need iron again. You can make all the hoppers and droppers, all the things, all the iron armor you want. Just plenty of stuff. So let's start talking about, and there's one right now. Let's start talking about this. This is how you build the village. You build this thing, you build it in the sky. Uh, you want to build it 100 blocks away from any other village. So if you're going to build a second one of these, you build the first one up at 256, you want to build the second one at 156. And that way you've got 100 blocks between them. Well, roughly 100. 100 blocks away from center to center, I think it is. 100. So I have two of these things in my survival world. And they're 100 blocks apart. You can see up here at the top, this is my one of my villages here. And it is spawning, like I said, about two golems every six minutes. That's a lot of golems. Now down here, we've got this, uh, this sphinx, and this is the processing plant. That's what the video is really about here. I've already spent six minutes just talking about this. 
the system, so you know a basic understanding of this. There's no redstone upstairs in the village. I do want to cover one important thing, and that is how to get the water to flow properly out of this thing. Since I've gone and shown you my design, I might as well show you how to place the water. Now, for this I'm going to use um, blue wool, and that's just it makes it so much easier to show you the layout of the uh, water blocks. So what I did was I skipped three here, and I put a block down. So there's three blocks where there isn't a water block, and then there's a block. Okay, then I go from here, and from here, I put one here. Okay, four, like so. We skip two, one, two, three, four, five. That's important. Four on this side, five on this side. Do it again. Again, skipping three. One, two, three, four. Skip two. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Do it again. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Skip two. One, two, three, four, five. And again, these should be water blocks, buckets of water. Okay. Just bear with me. I'll make sense in a second. So we do one, two, three, four. Skip two, one, two, three, four, five. Oops, five. If you go ahead and put torches down over these water blocks, uh, you will have enough light in this area so that no other mobs can spawn. Uh, this will provide just barely enough light. I think we ended up putting torches in the center. Since this will all be covered in water, I think we ended up putting torches, like, in here. You know, but there's currently an iron golem in there, so I can't. Alright, so, there's that, and then what we put was water blocks here, 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 and here. Okay, and that's, that basically creates a funnel effect of water without taking out any spawn, spawnable blocks and the columns will all just flow right here. The water ends right at this shape, no problem. There is occasionally a problem where two golems will end up here at the exact same time, and they'll fight over which one can get through the hole first. Eventually, it clears itself. Eventually, one of them gives up, or looks away, or something, I don't know. But eventually, one of them will just come down, and then the other one comes down, and then you're on to the next set of golems spawning. Okay. Uh, the chicken farm here. Uh, this is a very simple little design. It involves eight hoppers and some chests. And what I basically do is I take a hopper and put a block down. Just any old block. And I have a hopper pointing in this direction here. Like so. Then I have another hopper pointing into that hopper. Another one pointing into that hopper. And this one pointing into that one. So this is what the laying floor of the thing looks like here, the chicken farm. It is just four hoppers constantly swirling eggs around. I call this the swirler. We'll be using this in the iron golem farm, but basically this makes sure that if there is ever a space available in any one of these hoppers, any, la any egg laid on top of any of these hoppers will eventually find its way into that empty spot. It's just a, a, a way to be efficient. It uses a few extra hoppers, but I, I find it a little bit more efficient than just doing four hoppers pointing into four chests. Again, costs four more hoppers, but it's also a bit of a backlog. You know, when you pull when you pull items out of here, you got extra eggs stored up in there. So, all right, let's move on to the actual innards of the iron sphinx, because that's why you're here. And um, if you skipped over the introductory stuff, that's okay. I won't hold it against you. So let's start off by placing some chests. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just jump up on a block here quickly throw down some more chests so that we can do this pretty quickly. I don't want to waste too much of your time or mine. And I've done about 17 takes on this thing, and my throat is very tired. So let's go ahead and put some hoppers down. One, two, three, like that. And then the fourth one we put up here. Okay. So we've got these three hoppers pulling from each other, and this one in its own separate line. So I'm going to go a hopper here hopper here, and a hopper here. That is your iron line. Okay. Then, well, let's let's go ahead and build the circuit here. So you're going to need some blocks. So let's put a block here, block here, and a block there. The 
This is a temporary block. Again, it doesn't matter what materials you use here. This is just for um, purposes of, of the system. It has to obviously be a solid block. It can't be steps or half blocks or things like that because of the way the redstone has to travel on it. But you experiment with it if you want to. You know, you don't have to use it exactly the way I do. So here's your iron test. So there's that. We're going to need some redstone. We're going to need a comparator. Uh, this system uses three comparators and four repeaters and about 12, 10 or 12 blocks of, or not blocks, but blobs of redstone. So we put our redstone dust here, and we're going to also need two redstone torches. So here's one, we'll put it there. Now, because this comparator is unpowered, I'm just going to explain this circuit here. Because this is unpowered, this block is not powered. Because this is not powered here, this brake, this redstone torch is turned on and is applying the brakes to this hopper here. If I put items in this hopper, they don't go anywhere. They just stay there. They don't go into this line. So let's go ahead and move back on to this circuit. Uh, in order for this to make any more sense, we're going to need another hopper pointing any way but down. And the way I've done that is this direction here. Uh, generally speaking, you don't want it pointing into any other hopper. Uh, and the easiest way to do that in this case is to point it into the comparator. It doesn't have to point into the comparator, it's just convenient for, for this structure. This is going to be our filter, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some blocks in here that will never ever end up in the hopper by accident. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to use grass blocks. And then we're going to need some iron, which lives under miscellaneous. And we'll put some iron blocks in there. We're going to put 18 in there. 18 iron bars. Okay. You'll notice they're not filtering. Excuse me. They're not filtering down into here. Uh, but you'll notice there's power here. This power is enough to create one block of redstone power. If I put one more item in this, whether it's a grass block or an iron ingot, if I put one more iron ingot in there it is enough to power it. I'm going to put a bunch in there just so you can see what happens. But basically it's able to power this line here, which is now able to power this repeater from this block, which turns off this torch, releasing the brake, and allowing items to flow through here into this chest down here. That's what this circuit is doing right now. This is a filter. So, let's talk about our Need an actual input line, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a grass block here, and I'll put a hopper, and I'll put a hopper here. Now I've made a slight change from my original design uh, because of a circuitry issue that I discovered, uh, which was basically causing, basically if the iron line backed up too much, it could cause the rose line to dump its contents to dump the filter in and basically break the system and it would be, require a hard reset. This is design this change is designed to fix that. So let's go ahead and put our line here. A uh, cool thing about hopper lines is that they don't have to go they don't they can go right next to each other in zigzag. So what we've done here is we've gone this way. You'll notice the hoppers come from here to here and then we're going to take this line and go this way. Now we're skipping a space. Uh, my original filter design had these two filters step by step, or side by side rather, but again what I found was if this if this filter got overloaded it could cause that that filter to trigger and dump. So we're going to go ahead and build a gap. Because we can, right? We can build a gap, and that was the easy solution for my problem. I tried I tried everything. I tried all kinds of contraptions with extra blocks and extra redstone and more repeaters and all this stuff. I just couldn't make it work. When what I really needed was just a space, just a little breathing room between the filters. So it's not quite as compact, but for this particular project, it doesn't need to be. So we need a bunch of hole in here. Put our repeater in there. Put a torch in right on there. And now we need the rose line. This is the line where the roses will come out. And 
and I've decided, I previously decided that that needs to go on like that. Skip a block too. Okay. Oh, a little bit, a little bit jumpy here, and I'm uh, gonna be honest, I'm a little tired, and uh, the frame rate's a little bit buggy because of the recording program. So here is our rose line, and we're gonna go ahead and create a uh, another hopper here for the filter, and we want this line to continue on this way. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and prime this filter. Four blocks. Oops. Excuse me, I'm all sloppy now. And uh, we need uh, some roses. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we need to go in here, and we need again. Well, we can put a whole bunch of roses in there if we want to, because they're going to dump out into the rose line right here. There they are. Okay, so the filter is doing its job. It is filtering the roses out. It will stop at 18. This is filtered the iron down into here, which is there. Okay, so now what do we need to do? We've got our line that starts here, makes a U-turn, and goes this way. So we want this line to meet up with this. And because of the way so because of this particular area right here, this, this four block area, very important. We can't we can't put hoppers attached to that anymore. So we are going to take this line. And we can't come up here, but we can come up here. Like so. And so now what we've got is we've got our input spot here, and then it wraps around here, gets tested to see if it's iron. If it's iron, it gets dumped into those chests over there. If it's it if it's not iron, it comes over here. It gets tested to see if it's roses. If it's roses, it gets moved down this pipe. If it's not, it continues around here, through here, and into this chest here. And that's where those items will end up. Now, let's take a look here. Make sure I'm not going crazy. I am. No, I'm not. Okay. There should have been a dirt block. No, there shouldn't because I'm using creative mode, that's why. Okay, so let's check our input now. I'm going to go ahead and put in some crazy items that we should just never see. Here's a hopper, here's a bucket of water, some stone, here's, uh, here's, here's a rose. Okay, here's some redstone torch. And all those items are going to go through here. The rose is going to end up in here. Everything else is going to end up in there. Notice there's no rows. Okay. So, we've got our mechanism mostly built at this point, but let's go ahead and build our swirler, because that is what goes up here. Uh, again, I'm going to throw down a block just to make it easy. And then we'll put the four hoppers facing each other. Ugh, so difficult for me. Okay. And there. So now this is our killing floor. Iron and roses and whatnot will go in here and swirl around until there is space in this hopper here. This hopper will then funnel this stuff right over the filters, check it for iron, check it for roses, or throw it back in this chest over here. Okay, that's why these two lines don't connect. Okay. Now for the purposes of my, for decorative purposes only, um, I like to put some cauldrons in here. Again, cauldrons are just made with iron. You're going to have so much iron. So throw a few cauldrons in here. And why cauldrons and not... You can't use hoppers because they will interfere. They'll, they'll basically screw up the lines. But cauldrons won't. But from the outside, you can't really tell the difference. So if you make a wall here, out of any block you like, You know, you can, use, you can use grass blocks if you want. It's your funeral. But you can see that the, the gaps aren't as noticeable, and it... Yeah, I can see a little bit of daylight there, but when you seal all this in, you won't be able to. Okay, so now we got a bunch of... a bunch of hoppers in there and stuff, but we still have this rose line just sitting there, and part of the reason we're do I'm doing this video is because someone asked me, how do we do the 
rose line. How do we do the spitting of the roses out? Because that was that was the, the mystery. So, uh, for my original design, I made a little water trough here, and I knocked out these back blocks like so. Now, my original design didn't have a gap here, but I think. Honestly, I think that might be the same. Oh, I think that might be the same distance. So let's grab the water bucket and let's check it out. Okay, we'll put one here. And we'll put one over here. Same distance. Excellent. So if we if we block this out to here, like so. We got a nice straight edge on our water trough, and we've got all this fancy. You know, your water, it is what it is. So what we now need to do is dispense these roses in here. We're going to need a dropper. And uh, that's under redstone, a dropper here. Uh, and we're going to put one, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, no, not right there, but right here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put in a few extra blocks. So one, And then we're going to put a comparator here, and I'm going to just grab some redstone and a uh, repeater. We need a repeater here, and a repeater here, and we need to connect all those up with redstone. There's no delays on any of these repeaters, by the way. Okay, so there's that. There's our automated dispensing system. Now we just need to connect the hopper in here. I don't recommend running it along this block because this block's going to have power and uh, it's, it's just going to be, it, it can jam up the system and I think it's better off to just put your hopper in like that and uh, connect your hoppers up. So what I do is I just swing out this way like so. And now you'll see the roses that were in that line getting spit out. Now, you'll notice they're also overshooting, and what I did to solve that was just put in a couple of blocks here. Like that. Okay, and there's your block. It's stopping the roses from flying too far over. And there you go. So you got your roses, you got your iron, and, and all that being sorted out. So let's go ahead and just build the killing floor real quick. It's not a very complicated thing to build. Uh, it is just, after all, a tube with lava and water. But it can be a little, a little complicated. So I put a door in my design uh, because I did not want to die. <laughs> I, I find that I often do not want to die, and uh, not dying is one of my favorite things. But I put, a I put a double door in there so that if I'm upstairs working on the village and I fall through that hole, which happened a lot, a lot, so many times. Um, I don't want to die, and I'm going to be falling through lava, so I decided that I wanted there to be water in here. And so if I'm falling through the lava and I hit the water, then I don't die. I just, I take like two hearts of damage. It's not a big, or a heart and a half of damage, two hearts of damage. So go in here, I put in a couple of signs. So, and a couple on the other side, like so. Okay, and now we just put in our blocks here, okay. and up here, and we'll go ahead and get our lava. Ugh, doing it again, okay. And lava, okay. Now, the cool thing about lava is it can't go through signs, so the lava stays up there. didn't link together. And I washed away all the redstone! Isn't that awesome? Oh my god, that's so awesome. Okay, so, uh, don't do what I just did, but, uh, basically, there we go. That stops that. Let's go fix my... Oh, I just lost the comparator. That's no big deal. Okay, so, drop that back on there. And everything else looks fine. Okay. 
And now what you've got is you've got a situation where you've got lava, you've got water, you've got hoppers. Close these doors. I usually put a, I put a um, couple of, oh, what do you call it? <sighs> Pressure plates right here. So if you have the doors open, when you leave, you'll close the doors. Automatically. Okay. So let's go ahead and simulate some golems falling into this thing, shall we? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... You can build this as tall as you want, of course. You can build a pipe all the way to the sky if you wanted. Uh, I don't know why you'd want that, but if you wanted it, you could totally do that. So for my purposes, I just want to create some iron golems that we can sacrifice to the god of progress. So let's see here, we need some of those and some of those. Okay. Iron, 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 pumpkin. And get off the edge. See, I built him in a weird place. Okay, so he falls in. He gets that horrid hissing sound and munching sound. It just, it dies. And we'll watch here at the input line. And we'll see iron. And he didn't drop any roses. Well, but he did drop some iron. So, oh, those are roses from the, yeah, from the, the test. So, basically, we keep spawning in golems in there, and eventually they're just going to keep... But I have to spawn them on this side. Nope. I think he thinks he's on top of the sign. No, he doesn't. He's on top of the lava. He's just stuck in the block there, is all that is. No, 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 get in there. Okay. He's going to escape, because I'm a terrible jail designer. Okay, fine. Have it your way. Get off. If you're not going to get in the lava, get off the machine. Okay, so... It's like a cat. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and build a wall here. And hopefully he shouldn't get caught. Still caught in the half blocks. Okay, in between blocks. Okay, there. Goes in. We'll watch the input line again. And we'll see when he dies. He's dropped roses and iron. And there it goes. You'll see that the iron went in there, and the roses got spit out here. You can maybe hear that click. And there's the rose right there. That is the interior mechanism of the Iron Sphinx. How you decorate it at this point is entirely up to you. All you have to remember is to get this hole here to line up with this hole here in the sky. And so we're back in the survival world, and you can see here the Iron Golem, Iron Golem, Iron Sphinx in all its glory. As you can see, it's obviously not actually made of iron. Uh, that was an aesthetic choice. Uh, it's just the Sphinx, but what it really is is the Crucible for killing Iron Golems. Uh, they spawn up in those spawning chambers up above, as you can see the two village platforms, uh, about a hundred blocks apart, just like I said earlier. Uh, each of them is two stories. All right, so what does it do? Well, it generates a lot of iron, as you can see here. Um, this has only been running for about, I want to say it's had about six hours of time to run, and in those six hours, it has uh, six hours of people being on the server. Um, that's important. It won't do anything if no one's here. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's generated a bit of iron, I'd say. Um, as you can see, there is easy access to the uh, killing floor, and it is safe to go in here. Don't hop up and down, though. But if you ever find yourself in here, it's easy to get out. Very easy. Oh, good, we got a golem in there right now, as you can see and hear. And uh, that water makes for a wicked hissing sound when it's being killed, so I really like it. It's just terrible. But yeah, as you can see, we're getting iron. And we got some roses in the back. We can hear it clicking away. So, there they are. Okay, so I would like to say a thank you to the... Uh, 
various YouTube Minecraft people who have, unbeknownst to them, contributed to this project. First off, I'd definitely like to thank uh, Mumbo of the Mumbo Jumbo channel, uh, particularly for his Hermitcraft episodes. Uh, his uh, Let's Play videos on the Hermitcraft server. I've, I've never played on that server myself, but uh, I don't even know if it's open to the public, to be honest. But uh, yeah, his videos were the ones that made me understand that spawn chunks were a thing. Uh, he also was the first time I'd ever seen an iron golem farm. So, uh, definitely thank you to him for that. Also, I should mention uh, Nims TV. Uh, his Iron Cloud tutorial uh, is almost literally exactly the, um, almost literally exactly? Whatever. It's <laughs> pretty much exactly the model I used for my spawning platforms, except my spawning platforms are two blocks larger because when I followed his tutorial, I was getting golems spawning on top of the walls. I didn't want that, so I made it a little bit bigger. No problem. Uh, I should also mention, uh, let's see, who is this? This was X Crisby. Uh, he made a tutorial on the super compact hopper item sorter, 162 working, and um, his circuitry is exactly what I used for my um, for the filters, uh, for sorting out the iron and the roses. Uh, I'd like to mention also the YouTuber who made the video explaining how to trigger a dropper repeatedly until it's empty. I don't know who that was, I'm sorry. I, I looked through my YouTube history and I've got no idea where that came from. It might have been Mumbo, actually, but I honestly don't know. Um, sorry. Whoever you were, thank you for your video. Um, I hope that this tutorial has been useful to you. I hope you can bend this idea into new designs and new shapes, and, and I would love, absolutely love, to see what you can do with what you learned from this video, if anything. Um, and uh, if you have ideas for improvements uh, or, or whatever, I would love to see them. I really would. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching.